Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Berean Baptist Church for this, our Wednesday night service. I don't know what happened to the rest of our Facebook team. You look really, really lonely up there. Uh, would you like us to go outside and find a tumbleweed to keep you company? Oh, there's, they're finally coming. Okay, very good. We're going to start out singing tonight. Brother Carl is going to lead us in a song. Grab your songbooks. Let's stand as we sing. Ah, you see, uh, Wesley and I are the only ones that are current on our uh, patriotic uh, Veterans Day is less than five hours away. Good job. So, uh, all right. Well, let's turn to number 405. 405, it's just like his great love. Amen. <laughs> A friend I have called Jesus, whose love is strong and true, and never fails howe'er tis tried, no matter what I do. I've sinned against this love of His, but when I knelt to pray, confessing all my guilt to Him, the sin clouds rolled away. It's just like Jesus to roll the clouds away. It's just like Jesus to keep me day by day. It's just like Jesus all along the way. It's just like his great love. Sometimes the clouds of trouble be dim the sky above. I cannot see my Savior's face. I doubt his wondrous love. But his from heaven mercy see, beholding my despair. In pity burst the clouds between and shows me he is there. It's just like Jesus to roll the clouds away. It's just like Jesus to keep me day by day. It's just like Jesus all along the way. It's just like his great love. When sorrow's clouds overtake me, and break upon my head when life seems worse than useless and i were better dead i take my grief to jesus then <coughs> or do i go in vain just like Jesus to roll the clouds away. It's just like Jesus to keep me day by day. It's just like Jesus all along the way. It's just like his great love. Oh, I could sing forever of Jesus' love divine. Of all his care and tenderness for this, for life of mine. His love is in and over all. And wind and waves obey. When Jesus whispers, peace be still. And calls the clouds away. It's just like Jesus to roll the clouds away. It's just like Jesus to keep me day by day. It's just like Jesus all along the way. It's just like his great love. Amen. So glad that you're here tonight. And a welcome back. And, and I hope that this means that uh, that you're doing better and that you're feeling better. Um, I'm assuming they do they have you on kind of a restricted diet? Okay, because I, I thought maybe it was no fruity pebbles for breakfast or something like that. And so anyway, I am glad that you're feeling better. Good to see you. 
And uh, good to have each and every one of you here. The Homeschool Association is so excited because it's Veterans Day. They don't have school tomorrow. Uh, parents, you can help me with this. I said, make sure every veteran they see tomorrow that they go there and say thank you for their service and, and just uh, remember that. And you know, and I, and I asked them, they have a little bit of a goal. Only, they can only do this one day a week. It's the last day of the school week. And that is, if, they're, if they get all their schoolwork done early, they get to leave early. And so, and so the official word was they left at the afternoon juice break. Okay, but that's still early. That's more than the full school day. And uh, so they're excited. They're really, really uh, doing well this year. And I'm, I'm really, really excited and, and grateful about that. Uh, again, just a few things here. We're going to have um, our song service. We'll have announcements. Uh, we will have uh, the message. And uh, then there will be a brief business meeting uh, after the message. And you go, Pastor, how brief? That really depends on you. You know, if you're an unruly cloud, it, crowd, it could go on forever. But if you're, if, uh, if you're in good frame of mind, this could go really, really fast. And then we'll have our prayer time. So let's have a word of prayer. Ask God's blessing on the service here. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you uh, for your great love for us. And we do pray that uh, you would help us, uh, help us to meet the need of the hour and help us have the wisdom to know what that need is. Uh, Lord, you have uh, put us together as a church uh, to be a help one to another. Help us learn what that means. Grow us in you, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. And you may be seated. And uh, Brother Carl's going to lead you in another song here. All right, number 105, 105. Rescue the perishing. <clears throat> Rescue the perishing, care for the dying, snatch them in pity from sin and the grave. Weep for the erring one, lift up the fallen, Tell them of Jesus, the mighty to save. Rescue the perishing, care for the dying. Jesus is merciful, Jesus will save. Though they are sliding him, still he is waiting, waiting the penitent child to receive. Plead with them earnestly, Plead with them gently, he will forgive if they only believe. Rescue the perishing, care for the dying. Jesus is merciful, Jesus will save. Down in the human heart, crushed by the tempter, feeling the very that grace may restore. Touched by the loving heart, wakened by kindness, clouds that are broken will vibrate once more. Rescue the perishing, care for the dying. Jesus is merciful, Jesus will save. Rescue the perishing, duty demands it, strength. For the labor the Lord will provide Back to the narrow way Now the poor wanderer a Savior has died Rescue the perishing Care for the dying Jesus is merciful Jesus will save Wonderful singing. Brother Jim, can you look behind you there and see in that cubby hole right behind you there? Do I have one more visitor packet? Um, it should be right in the cubby hole there, right behind you. And I think I have one more there. Okay, and I know she doesn't feel like a visitor, but it's been a while since she's been here. So, Donna, we're going to give you that. And then, uh, Brother Glenn, can you grab? There's something very important to grab in the back coat closet there. And uh, what it is, is Donna, I know you come every year, except 
you did not come last year. 11 months ago, um, 11 months ago, um, Mrs. Watkins, and uh, this is uh, Donna Davis, uh, from kind of the Oregon City Malala Beaver Creek area, and she comes every year. Uh, been friends of ours for years and years, yet we mug all our visitors. That's the new mug. And, um, and <clears throat> so anyway, but she couldn't come last year. And so um, 11 months ago, there was, a, or 13 months ago, there was a clandestine mission. And, uh, and, and Mrs. Watkins left, and she met uh, Donna and gave her a special gift. Just before, a year ago, most of you realized you all had a special gift as well. In fact, Amen. you guys were not very generous. You didn't give anyone else gifts, but she got a special gift. And, uh, and so she, she actually handled her special gift better than just about everybody else did. But uh, anyway... Uh, we're glad that we're here and uh, pray for Mrs. Don and Mrs. Watkins. They're, they're headed off to a retreat in Coeur d'Alene, Idaho. They are leaving about middle of the day tomorrow. So pray for that. While you're doing that, uh, pray for the teenagers that are going from Somerville Baptist Church to and Berean Baptist Church headed to the uh, Northwest Youth Conference, and that is at uh, Greater Portland Baptist Church. Jared will be going. Also, Ann and Lexi uh, will be going as well as uh, some of the teens from Somerville Baptist Church. So uh, pray for travel mercies and pray for safety for them. I viewed the four-page disclaimer for use of the trampoline park in over there. Four pages. And I'll tell you what, you have literally signed away everything. I, I mean, it's just amazing. It's kind of like um, it's kind of like if Somerville returns and brings pieces of your child in a Ziploc baggie, it's not their fault. I mean, it's just craziness. But uh, anyway, uh, there's always these uh, forms to sign and everything, and so uh, that took place. So just remember those things. Is there anybody who needs a bulletin? You do not have the bulletin of the month. I just raise your hand, and we'll get those for you. Anybody need? Uh, this bulletin right here, pumpkin is the color of the month right here. Just looking, looking. It looks like um, if somebody can get one uh, to Donna. Brother Glenn, you're moving faster than Brother Jim. Why don't you do that for him? Uh, Brother Jim is feeling so much better. They gave him a chiropractic adjustment today, which explains why he's hardly moving at all. It really, really helped. And uh, anyway... And so we're taking care of that. Let me make mention of a few of the things that are taking place. Um, again, uh, happy Veterans Day. And to those, uh, those in our church uh, that served in the armed services, again, thank you for your service to our country. It means a great deal. Just encourage us as a church family to encourage those who sacrificed uh, for our country to remember that. Um, also, in honor of Veterans Day, um, the students of Faith Bible Institute get to take an exam, okay? I'm sorry, the exam, I don't think it's red, white, and blue. I think it's just black and white. And uh, black and white and red all over if you do bad. And, uh, but anyway, so that is our first exam of the semester, and that is taking place tomorrow. Go ahead and get that done. Um, Institute will begin a half hour later because of that. They, they shorten things up on those times, and so we'll start at 7 instead of our normal 6.30 time. Um, Saturday, it says 5 p.m. in the bulletin, but I, let me give you a qualifier here. That is in the mountain time zone. You need to think 4 p.m., those of you who are staying, if you're going to watch the Hernandez-Hammond wedding live stream. In here, we have the address for the Florence Baptist Church uh, Facebook page, uh, let me double check with my Facebook team. You think you pretty much have this worked out so that you're going to kind of piggyback on that feed? Is that the plan? Yeah. Oh, with that was, that was not as convincing nor as encouraging as I thought it was going to be. I think we can. I think we can. Sounds like a train going uphill. Um, now, to help you on that, they will do for that wedding very often what what we do for our church service. They will start broadcasting early. 
they will have a, a lens like, uh, like, please stand by, we're trying to find the bride, you know, or something like that. And uh, anyway, <laughs> and so there will be a lens before things officially start. And so anyway, that'll be taking place. Um, uh, Brother John Martin uh, of Somerville Baptist Church, he will be, he will be here and uh, he will be preaching. He'll be speaking in the Sunday School Hour, Combined Teen Adult Sunday School Hour, uh, Sunday morning service and Sunday night service. Uh, there will be no choir rehearsal because the director and as far as I know, every regular pianist of Berean Baptist Church will be out of town. And um, um, Debbie Martin, praise God, she plays piano, and so she will be stepping in as, an, as a accompanist. And uh, so you do not have to sing a cappella. But what a wonderful time to have him come Veterans Day weekend. He is an incredibly patriotic man and a good preacher, and so you guys will have a fabulous time. Wednesday, one week from today, Brother Bob Valier will be with us. And again, if you would like to sign up a financial counseling appointment, there will be a sign-up sheet in the foyer for that. Right now, there is a sign-up sheet in the foyer for our Thanksgiving dinner, Sunday night, November 21st. And so really, really encourage you to look at that and sign up for that. Um, uh, praise God, the turkeys have already been signed up for, so we know we'll have turkey. We may have nothing else, but we'll have turkey and a little stuffing. But uh, anyway, go ahead and look at that sign up. Please be generous. Uh, we're going to have at least seven extra mouths to feed with uh, the Passage Northwest. Plus, we're going to be passing out, we're going to have 2,500 door hangers to pass out all over town. We're going to have a flyer blitz on that Saturday, so we're likely to have extra guests. So be uh, generous with the food. It is going to be, it's going to be an absolutely wonderful weekend. Uh, looking forward to that. Uh, by the way, those of you praying for Brother Joel Deku's brother Paul, today he turned the corner. He was literally hovering right at the precipice of death. He was so close. And today he turned the corner. He's starting to approve. Pastor Ken Schultz has improved. He will be going home from the hospital any day now. And so there's been a lot of really positive things uh, that have happened with that. So thank you for remembering that. Uh, many other things on the, on the bulletin that I don't have time to talk about. But uh, anyway, just want to let you know about, about those items. And so, Brother Carl, if you would lead us in one more song here. Okay, let's go to number 363, 363, His Way With Thee. Stand, if you will, please. Would you live for Jesus and be always pure and good? Would you walk with him within the narrow road? Would you have him bear your burden, carry all your load? Let him have his way with thee. His power can make you what you want to be. His blood can cleanse your heart and make you free. His love can fill your soul and you will see. T'was best for him to have his way with thee. Would you have him make you free and follow at his call? Would you know the peace that comes by giving all? Would you have him save you so that you may never fall? Let him have his way with thee. His power can make you what you want to be. His blood can cleanse your heart and make you free. His love can fill your soul and you will see. T'was best for him to have his way with thee. Would you in his kingdom find a place of constant rest? Would you prove him true in providential test? Would you in his favor, Savior, always at your best? Let him have his way with thee. His power can make you what you ought to be. His blood can cleanse your heart and make 
make you free. His love can fill your soul and you will see. T'was best for him to have his way with thee. Amen. Wonderful singing. Please turn in your Bibles to the book of Colossians. Looking at the book of Colossians chapter 1, let us stand uh, for the reading of God's Word. If you cannot stand, you can remain comfortably seated. Uh, if you need a Bible, there's one in the middle of the pew in front of you. I always say, get used to the pages. Uh, China has hypersonic missiles. And if you ever have an EM pulse, you're going to want to know that you still can turn pages in a book and not lose uh, your ability to do that. Colossians chapter 1, uh, looking at verse 20. And um, a lot of things are happening since we're going to be out of town. Uh, we are training a new sound man. And uh, David is doing a wonderful... <laughs> Sorry, I had, to <coughs> I, had, I had to do that. I just, I couldn't... I couldn't resist, okay? <laughs> At this point, you know, people are slapping their smartphones and banging on their computer screens right now, wondering, hey, what happened there? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Colossians chapter 1. Dave, you're doing a fine job. Thank you so much. Colossians chapter uh, 1, looking at verse 20. And let us look in the Word of God together and we look at the words of uh, the Apostle Paul here uh, talking about the ministry. And uh, one of the things that's kind of interesting in the Greek and Hebrew is uh, they use run-on sentences. And sometimes it's hard to know where to start a passage because I'm having to start mid-sentence because they write in sentences that last 15 verses long before you get a comma or a period. So... But let's start here. This is a good spot right here. Verse 20. And having made peace through the blood of his cross, by him to reconcile all things unto himself, by him I say, whether they be things in earth or things in heaven, and you that were sometime alienated and enemies in your mind by wicked works, yet now hath he reconciled in the body of his flesh through death to present you holy and unblameable and unreprovable in his sight. If you continue in the faith, grounded and settled, and be not moved away from the hope of the gospel which ye have heard and which was preached to every creature which is under heaven, whereof I, Paul, am made a minister." who now rejoice in my sufferings for you and fill up that which is behind of the afflictions of Christ in my flesh for his body's sake, which is the church, whereof I am made a minister according to the dispensation of God, which is given to me for you to fulfill the word of God. Even the mystery which has been hid from ages and from generations, but now is made manifest to his saints, to whom God would make known what is the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory, whom we preach, warning every man and teaching every man in all wisdom, that we may present every man perfect in Christ Jesus, whereunto I also labor, striving according to his working, which worketh in me mightily. Let us have a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, I pray that you would help us to understand and apply your word today. Because you are a wonderful God a God of marvelous design. And our fellowship together is something that you have divinely made. Help us not to take it for granted and help us not to misunderstand its purpose, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated.
I want to look at this passage and let me give just kind of a brief exegesis of what we're looking at here in just dealing with these verses. First of all, I want you to understand that at the very beginning, um, God is speaking to the believer. He is speaking to those of you who have received Christ as your personal Savior and he's speaking to you in a personal way. And so to the believer, it's very important to look at, looking at verse 21 is this. You had a before and an after. If you've received Christ as your personal Savior and you've received him in truth, you have experienced a before and after. You've experienced what your life was before and you've experienced what your life is after. And it says you were sometime alienated and that means in past times you were alienated in enemies in your mind by wicked works enemies of what enemies of god by wicked works and it says this though yet now hath he reconciled there's been a change you were an enemy of god you received christ you are now no longer an enemy of god god calls you a friend you call God a friend. There is a relationship that has come alive with the God of the ages and that only happens through receiving Christ and in the person of Jesus Christ. So to the believer first, you had a before and after and that is your present tense. And then there, here is your future tense in verse 22. It says this, in the body of his flesh yet hath now hath he reconciled in the body of his flesh through death to present you holy and unblameable and unreprovable in his sight. And now some of this you've heard before. You say, well, yeah, I understand. I stand before God and he sees the righteousness of Jesus Christ and, and he doesn't see the sins that I've committed and, and so he doesn't see me. And people go, yeah, I am now before God. I am without blame. No, it's more than that. You're more than without blame. You're without even the possibility that there could be blame. It doesn't say just you're without blame. It says you are unblameable. And if you want to ask a created being in the universe whether this works or not, then ask the devil himself who accuses you before the Lord day and night trying to put blame upon you and he can't do it. He can't make anything stick because of the blood of Jesus Christ. He goes up there and he tries to blame you, but you are unblameable. And you are unreprovable, which means that before God, there is no way literally to correct you on anything before God, what God has done through Jesus Christ. Now, I'd love to say that I wish in, you know, in the real world, in the present tense, that we looked at each other and went, you know what, Nathan, you are absolutely unblameable. I asked Shannon and she said it's true. You can't blame you for anything. And you know, I wish it was I wish it was this way in the real world. But it is this way before the halls of heaven when we receive Christ as our personal savior. And so how will be presented? But there is an exhortation in verse 23. And the exhortation is don't drift. God has given you a position in the heavenlies. Don't drift in that position it says if you continue in the faith grounded and settled and be not moved away from the hope of the gospel and in other words don't get off track don't get off base don't veer off course you are right now you are headed toward the destination station and that station is heaven uh, you are headed to 777 pearly gates you are headed to reunion station in celestial city you are on your way you are on the track don't get off track but that that is talking to the believer and then it gets more specific and now it's talking specifically in scripture here to the colossian church and it says this paul begins to say some things about this here's what paul says 
to the people in the church. Paul says, this is what I did for you. He says, who now rejoice in my sufferings for you. That is Paul rejoicing in Paul's sufferings for the church of Colossae. And fill up that which is behind of the afflictions of Christ in my flesh for his body's sake, which is the church. And the apostle Paul is saying, well, here's the thing. If there were any afflictions that Jesus missed, they failed to put on Christ. He says, they're now putting it on me. Think about this. Think about the Apostle Paul, the calling in Acts chapter 9. And it says, and, and you've got Ananias who, who says, I don't want to talk to him. I know right now he can't see anything, but he's done the church harm. And, uh, and God says, do not fear Ananias uh, to go see him for he is a chosen vessel, for I must show him the things that he must suffer for my sake. So when the Apostle Paul says, I suffer for Jesus' sake, that was his ministry. Literally, Paul was commissioned by Christ to a ministry of suffering. And he suffered for the church policy. And he says, and he says this for you, he says, I suffered for you. But then he continues on and says this. He says, number one, I suffer for you. And number two, I'm a dispensational preacher. And you look here in verse 25, whereof I am made a minister according to the dispensation of God, which is given to me for you to fulfill the word of God, even the mystery which has been hid from ages and from generations, but now is made manifest to his saints. To whom God would make known what is the riches and glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is, and here's the mystery, Christ in you, the hope of glory. In the Old Testament dispensation, the Holy Spirit never indwelt anybody. The Holy Spirit came upon people and the Holy Spirit would empower people, but more from the outside than from the inside. But when Jesus died on the cross, and he paid the price for our sins to allow man for the first time literally to be covered in Christ's righteousness and to be seen by God as holy on earth. That allowed the open door for the Holy Spirit of God to come and indwell every born again believer. And that is the mystery that that is a mystery that it's, it's no longer Christ doing this for you. Now it's literally Christ in you through the person of Jesus Christ and done by the person of the Holy Ghost. It's the new dispensation, the indwelling Holy Spirit of God. And then we have to understand this. So what do we do? We preach. What do we preach? We preach this message of reconciliation and dispensation and now we are preaching it to the masses and to the ages, the gospel. And not only the gospel, but the existence of the institution and the body of the church. And that was the introduction. Now it's time for the message. And the message is this. The every man ministry of the church. What is the ministry of the church? And by the way, the ministry of the church is not the some man ministry of the church. It's not my favorite buddy ministry of the church. It is the every man ministry of the church. In other words, what is needful is needful for everybody who is in the church. And so I'm going to deal with three things here that we need to look at here. And in verse 28, you find the words every man three times. And it's a different aspect of something that needs to be addressed or communicated with every man each time. First of all, starting with this. Whom we preach first, warning every man. This is the every man warning. In other words, somebody once said, you know, you call it soul winning, but you really ought to call it soul warning. Because you know what? The only ones that you win are the ones that say yes, but the ones that say no, you warned them. 
about a real hell. And so we have that, by the way, I, Jude 22 and 23, Jude 22 and 23 are my life verses. And one of them is the winning and one of them is the warning. The winning is it, and of some have compassion, making a difference. It means that the compassion, the love of Jesus Christ, has made a difference in somebody's life, and they've changed their mind, and they've changed their path, and they've changed their road, and they've received Christ as personal Savior. Some, you're warning, and others save with fear, pulling them out of the fire, hating even the garments spotted by the flesh. And so one of the things that we're supposed to do, we're supposed to warn every man. Yes, you can talk about everybody about the beauty of heaven and the golden streets and that Jesus is going to be there and the great fellowship and everything. But you've got to tell them the other part of that. Because you have to understand, in order for a person to be saved, they have to understand what they're being saved from. And what they're being saved from is an eternal lake of fire that's fire and brimstone and darkness and and suffering and burning but never burning up rotting but never rotting away and and having no communion and no compassion and no concept of the presence of God because the presence of God has departed the place and you can yell for all your worth and you can scream for all your worth for all eternity, and there's never going to be an answer. And I often think, I don't really like that person. I think they ought to go to hell. I'm thinking, you don't really know what hell's like. When you understand what hell really is, you wouldn't want to send your worst enemy there. People, it's not enough for a person to be saved. They've got to know what they're being saved from. And the reality is there's two eternities. There's eternal heaven or there's eternal hell. There's not temporary anything. And so it's important. So there's the every man warning, and it is the every man ministry of the church. We are out there, and we are warning. I mean, that's why I have, I mean, I don't have a, we pass out these little yellow, yellow cards. It doesn't say earn salvation free card or get salvation free card. It says get out of hell free card. No, you've got to have both things in there. And so it's important to understand that. So one is the every man warning, but then secondly is the every man lesson. First it's warning every man, but then it's teaching and teaching every man in all wisdom. In other words, there's an every man lesson that needs to be learned. And you see, it's not enough to regurgitate a fact. There's got to be something more than that. And you see, one is to teach people what the church is once they're saved. It's one thing to go to church. It's another thing to know what church is. My very first pastorate. First Baptist Church of Stevensville. I can talk about it freely because there's no longer First Baptist Church of Stevensville now after these many, many years. They, they call themselves something family church or something like that. And, uh, but when I was there and, and I became pastor of the church, it said right on the sign, independent, fundamental, Baptist church. But nobody knew what independent was. And nobody knew what fundamental was. And definitely nobody knew what Baptist was and certainly Nobody knew what church was. It even had the word friendly on there. I'm not sure they knew what that was some of the time either. But the thing is, I mean, it's easy to go to church and have no idea what church is. And it's important. We need to teach every man what church is. But not only what church is, we need to teach people how the church lives. You know, how does the church work? And you see, this is important to understand. Notice the phrase here. It's not here by accident. Teaching every man in all wisdom. Because you can have all the facts and not have a clue what to do. As a deacon in one of that, that first church I preached, I really liked it. He was a great deacon because he just was right down common sense. He said, Pastor, have you ever noticed that some people are really smart in a really dumb way? And that's how we'd put it. 
then you know and that's what that is it's somebody they've got all the facts they don't have any idea what to do with it the thing is we need to have wisdom we need to know what to do and the the wisdom of a concept is found in its application it's not enough to know hey this is a good church well what makes it a good church how can it stay a good church how should it be a good church how can we actually do the work of the ministry we need to know that and let me apply that the existence of the Christian life is of little value without the tools to live the Christian life it's not just to have a Christian life. It's to learn how to live a Christian life. And you see, this is the evidence of the wisdom of the church. I'm going to read a couple verses here. 2 Timothy, looking at 2 Timothy, um, or 1 Timothy chapter 3, verse 15, where the scripture says this, But if I tarry long, that thou mayest know how thou oughtest to behave, Wow, that's kind of a big word for a church. I didn't know the word behave was supposed to be found in church. Well, it is supposed to be found in church. That thou knows how thou oughtest behave thyself in the house of God, which is the church of the living God, the pillar and ground of the church. Well, I guess if you're supposed to behave, then there must be some gauge of behavior. And there is a gauge of behavior. It's the word of God. And the Word of God teaches you how to behave. And let me tell you something. Behavior isn't some inert thing. Behavior requires activity and it requires the right and proper activity. And so we have the evidence of the wisdom of church and one is to behave, to learn how to behave. That's an action thing. But how in the world are we going to learn how to behave? Well, it's found in the word learn. We've got to learn somewhere. And that is actually found in 2 Timothy. So you had 1 Timothy chapter 3, verse 15. Now you have 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16, where it says, All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. And so the word of God is not designed as the world's most curious coffee table ornament the word of god is not designed to be on the dusty part of the bookshelf the word of god is not designed to be left at church every sunday and left behind to mark your spot in the pew rather than being read at home this is an important thing to understand and so we have this, the evidence of the wisdom of the church is to behave and to learn. So we have the every man warning, and then we have the every man lesson. We're here to learn together, but then there's the every man outcome that we're looking at in the book of Colossians. So let's look at that real quickly one more time again. It says in verse 28 of Colossians chapter 1, whom we preach warning every man, and teaching every man in all wisdom that we may present every man perfect in Christ. That's going to take a lot of work. Because sometimes, I, I'm sorry, sometimes we do and, and maybe we'll look at a particular person in the pew and we just go, I do not know if they're ever going to get it. I don't know if they're ever going to figure out who God is. I don't know if they're ever going to figure out how to, how to live the Christian life. I don't know how to figure out, but the Bible says teaching every man, we're supposed to bring everybody along. This is important to understand. Uh, what that means, it's going to take a lot of effort. It's going to take a lot of work. And it should take a lot of work. But what are we doing effort for? Here is what it says here. It says that we may present every man perfect in Christ okay this is not holiness teaching this is not I have now reached sinless perfection can't you tell and if you don't believe that I'm sinlessly perfect I will bap you in the face in Christian love but I'll still smile no the word perfect here is the idea you grew up 
you grew up you finally grew up okay uh, you finally reach your max I mean if bodily you know you grew up when you finally reach your maximum height go pastor how do you know when you reach maximum height it's easy when you get to a certain height and then you begin to go the other direction then you can kind of calculate when you reached your maximum height okay you know when you reached full maturity okay when things as generally they they you grow up and you become an adult and you don't hurt you've reached maturity you know you've reached the other side when everything begins to hurt okay and so there is you there is a place where you kind of crest the top of the rise it happens and so we have this and so there's well the idea is you grew up the every man mount come and a church is supposed to be full of spiritual grown-ups not babies you know it's, it's really not going to be too good if somebody comes to church and they're grown up and they walk into a church and they've walked into the diaper section and you know the pews are full of these little squalling babies that are actually 30 something 40 something 50 something and 60 something because they never grew up and they let everything get to them And they whine that the preaching's too long, and they whine that the message is not clear, and they whine that the message is too clear because I know he is preaching right at me. I know he prepared that message for me. He spent the whole week thinking just about me and designed a message to preach against me because I am so important that he would do that. Brother Bobby Robertson, I loved him. He's in heaven now. Brother Bobby Robertson, Walkertown, North Carolina. They called him on the, on the East Coast. They called him the Prince of Preachers. And here he is. He's about 80 years old. He's preaching in Santa Clara, California. He says, you know what it is, guys? And this is how he does it with his hands. He says, we just, we just got to get rid of that baby stuff. Says, just no more, too much baby stuff happens in churches. We got to get rid of that baby stuff is what he said and so here is what the everyman goal is continued progress that we're working together to grow up and we're and we're trying to learn and what's so interesting is when you get to the end of it there there's several things to realize here we get to the end of it there's a purpose to growing up Second Timothy chapter 3 verse 16 we get to verse 17. Second Timothy 3:16 verse 17 and here it is for instruction in righteousness that the man of God may be perfect there's the word again grown up again. Ah oh, finally I'm grown up. And now finally I can sit down in the church you and revel in my grown upness. Actually, that's not what it says. Now that you're grown up, it says, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. It means now you're ready to serve God. Now you're ready to minister. Now you're ready to, to work in a way that is a benefit to the glory of God and to others this is the every man outcome the purpose of the perfection is ministry so we have our marching orders here very very simple in the church one we're supposed to warn every man we're supposed to warn everybody with the gospel of Jesus Christ two we're supposed to teach every man but teach them in all wisdom not just teach them the B-I-B-L-E, not just teach them facts, not just teach them memory verses, but actually teach people 
what to do with the word of God and the truth of God's word. How do I work it out in my life? And number three, the perfect is that we grow up so we can do it all over again. And so we can continue to help others grow in the faith. There's a wonderful Veterans Day. It's appropriate. Uh, the Marines have a motto. It's no man left behind. Well, the church needs to have a motto too. And that motto is this. We need to make this pact with each other. And that is no believer left behind. Let us have a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, I pray you would use your word in our lives. You have given us a place of significance by placing us in your church, by allowing us to serve in your harvest field. And Lord, there really is so much for us to do. Help us not to grow weary in well-doing but to do the work of this ministry to every man in Jesus name amen let us stand together the song is number 157 it talks about our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and what he paid and Jesus didn't pay some he didn't pay for some of your sins he paid for all of them he didn't pay for some of the sins of the whole world. He paid for all the sins of the whole world. He gave all. He paid all. What can we do for him? Let's sing this song together. I hear the Savior say, Thy strength indeed is small, child of weakness, watch and pray. Find in me thine all in all. Jesus paid it all, all to him I owe. Sin had left a crimson stain, he washed it white as snow. Lord, now indeed I find Thy power and Thine alone Can change the leper's spot And melt the heart of stone Jesus paid it all All to Him I owe Sin had left a crimson stain, he washed it white as snow. On the last. And when before the throne I stand in him complete, Jesus died my soul to save. My lips shall still Jesus paid it all, all to him I owe. Sin had left a crimson stain, he washed it white as snow.